again, chess fans. Uh, here I am again for you uh, for the new series, and uh, this series should be uh, a little bit different. So it will not be about opening theory. So it it will be about history of uh, world championship matches. Of course, in chess, yes, because we are here all for chess. So the time span is um, uh, somewhat uh, well. It's not a very long history, maybe. So uh, I will be showing you and presenting you matches from the first match, first official match for the world title, which was played in eighteen. 86 uh, between Steinitz and Zuckertort, won by Steinitz, and all the way until 2018, and match between Carlsen and Caruana. And I'm sure that you are all familiar with that match, which was won by Carlsen. Um, uh, of course, uh, while I'm recording this in 2021, we are all, whole chess world is uh, awaiting for. Uh, the end, so we are expecting that uh, candidates tournament this year should uh, should finish, and then the winner of the candidates tournament uh, should face uh, uh, Carlsen, world champion. Uh, yes, the plans are that uh, match should be played uh, around uh, the end of this year, 2021. So let's see what what. Uh, this year will bring to us hopefully another uh, a famous and interesting match. So in that time frame from 1886 uh, until 2018, we had over 50 uh, matches for the world title. And um, well, uh, I can't uh, present you everything. I can't present to you obviously all of those matches because this format this series will be uh, I will be presenting you um, historical uh, material and some games and some uh, important and fun facts uh, in in the format of 15 videos relatively short videos yes around half hour or a bit more and then uh, I'll try to present in every video one of those uh, uh, encounters, one of those uh, matches. So this is just an intro video and uh, already in first video I will be presenting first match between Steinitz and Zuckertorp, which was played, as I said, in 1886. Uh, but I thought, uh, you know, because uh, my idea is that, uh, you know, show you a bit of uh, a chess history and I hope it will be uh, instructional and also uh, um, entertaining for you that my idea is that you can uh, learn something and also hear some some interesting and fa fun facts so that's why I would like to uh, mention in intro video uh, uh, just shortly uh, what was happening before the the first official match for the world title so uh, uh, we all know, for example, that um, somewhere in in the 16th century, around 1560, uh, there are some uh, documents, written documents, about famous Spanish monk uh, Ruy Lopez de Segura. Uh, we don't have much uh, 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 from that period, yes, much written documents, but we know that he was... Uh, the strongest player of that era, or maybe uh, just the most famous, yes, uh, we can say. And uh, all of you who know about Spanish opening, uh, we know that it is called sometimes Ruy Lopez, exactly by that uh, uh, player's name, yes. And then we come to the uh, early 17th century, 1600, 1620, and so on, uh, and back in those uh, times, uh, the best players, or at least the most famous players, were Salvio and Greco, 
famous Gioacchino Greco and uh, and then okay of course uh, from those times we don't have uh, <laughs> too much uh, uh, written material so uh, I'll just skip to the the end of uh, 18th century so 1780s 90s and back in the, those times the best player and the most famous the best player in the whole world was a uh, famous very famous Andre Danikan Philidor and I'm very sure pretty sure that almost all of you know who was uh, uh, Philidor uh, we all know about uh, a famous Philidor uh, sentence pounds are the soul of chess yes who can uh, uh, forget about that and also I'm I'm sure that you know about uh, famous Philidor uh, defense uh, so that's one of the basic uh, methods of defense in, in uh, rook hand games so uh, it's uh, six trunk defense uh, which was invented by Philidor back in those times. So when you have uh, a rook and game pawn down, rook and, pa rook and pawn against rook, uh, if you are weaker side, you need to use the six trunk defense or Philidor defense in order to uh, save draw. Okay, then we had uh, in uh, then we come to the nineteenth uh, century. Yes. And then we had uh, in the beginning of 19th century in 1800s, yes, we had uh, players like De Chapelle and De La Boudonnet. And even today, uh, uh, you probably have heard about La Bourdonne, uh, Sicilian, uh, that, that is a sub variation of Sicilian defense. Sometimes some people call it Luventhal, some people call it. Uh, uh, Karl Kalashnikov uh, Sicilian for some reason and that is a Sicilian with early e5 yes uh, a little bit different than uh, than uh, Svashnikov or uh, Lasker Sicilian and okay then in uh, 1840s and uh, in those uh, in that era in that epoch uh, the, the world's best player was considered to be Howard Staunton, famous Howard Staunton. And uh, so, for example, he won a famous match against uh, Senaman in 1843, which was played in London. And uh, yeah, he, he won that match convincingly 11-6 uh, with four draws. And uh, so uh, Howard Staunton was considered uh, was considered the best player of that era uh, up until the first international chess tournament, uh, which was held in London in 1851. And uh, that tournament was played like uh, in the format of knockout series of knockout matches, and it was won by in the end by um, Adolf Anderson, famous and uh, brilliant uh, Adolf Anderson. So, uh, Anderson uh, uh, came, so he was born and he lived all, all of his life in Breslau, which is nowadays today Wroclaw. And uh, uh, he was considered to be the strongest uh, player in the world from that win in 1851 onwards. Um, and now uh, things become interesting because uh, in... Uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, amazing player Paul Morphy, which was uh, even famous, uh, Robert Fisher said for him that he thinks that Paul Morphy was the best uh, of all times. And who knows, maybe he, he even was, because in 1858, Paul Morphy comes from, uh, from America, from United States, so he comes to, to Europe to visit Europe and he plays uh, uh, matches with all, all the best players and he was beating one by one, he was beating everybody and he, uh, he won against uh, Andersen and against Andersen he won uh, um, yes, he won um, 7-2 with uh, uh, two draws, only two draws. Yes, back in the, those times he had uh, 
um, more interesting uh, play. You know, it was uh, somewhat a romantic style, uh, all about uh, attack, attack, attack. The yeah, defense was not so advanced like today, of course. But then something uh, peculiar happened, uh, and uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, nobody knows how to explain that. Uh, being, uh, you know, uh, famous Paul Morphy played against all the best players who, who, who could he meet. He won against everybody, uh, I mean against everybody, and in the end uh, there was nobody left, uh, you know, to beat. And then in the end he just said, okay, uh, I will give pawn and move odds to anybody to play me in the match. And finally, nobody, uh, nobody, you know, dared to play him. So in 1859, he returned to uh, to America, and he was quite young. He was just uh, 21 years old. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know. There, there are some articles and books written about what happened about him. Uh, it's a sad story. Somehow he declared that he he uh, abandons chess, so he retired. And then, uh, well, so he didn't play anymore, but you know he was still Paul Morphy. And then um, again in 1862, it was the next London tournament, uh, again international tournament with uh, very strong players of that era, and uh, Anderson won again. So we can say that again, Anderson was considered the best player in the world, at least the best among those uh, active players, yes. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, then uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was very successful in tournament play. And uh, that tournament in 1862 is actually the first uh, uh, international chess tournament which was played as a round-robin tournament, yes. As, as I said, in 1851, London tournament was played as a knockout. Um, okay, so, um, yes, uh, Anderson was considered again as the best active player in the world, but then he, he meets... Uh, Steinitz in the match in 1866 and we, we know today and we can say that it was an unofficial match for the world champion title which was won by Steinitz uh, it was uh, it was a close match and uh, the end uh, in the end the result was 8-6 for Steinitz without draws can you imagine that 8-6 no draws that was a bloodbath and of course i will uh, talk about also other things but let's stop here for the intro this should be enough and let me just uh, mention one thing which i uh, forgot to mention before howard staunton uh, so i was mentioning the chapelle and uh, uh, La Bourdonnais, yes, and there was an important match to mention, uh, and this is important for chess history, which was played between uh, La Bourdonnais and uh, MacDonald, and it was played in 1834, it was played uh, uh, in, in a format of six matches, 85 games, and it was won by La Bourdonnais. Why is this important? Why am I mentioning this? Because later when, um, uh, you know, Anderson appeared on the chess scene in 1850s and later, and uh, in 18, uh, after 1862 he was also considered the best uh, player in the world. Uh, when they asked him uh, how he learned to play chess, because you can imagine back in those times there was no computer, no internet. Even it was not easy to find uh, some uh, chess magazine and, and books. It was... Uh, <laughs> Of course, you could find them, but not as today, you know. And he said that he learned a lot uh, from um, the book uh, about match, the Labourdonnais MacDonald. So famous Adolf Anderson learned from that book a lot. Yes. 
Okay, now, uh, because this intro is maybe uh, taking some time, I would like to present to you some, you know, uh, because it will be a pity, it would be a shame if I don't present you some, you know, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, exert at least some kind of snippet from those games, from those times. Let me just show you uh, what happened. Uh, uh, in some of those games, how, for example, famous Anderson played. Let me just show you that. So, back in uh, 1851, uh, right after his uh, big tournament win in the uh, first uh, international chess tournament in London, 1851, Anderson played his famous, famous uh, immortal game against Kizaritsky, and I'm sure that you all know about that game. If not, please check that game. It's quite interesting. Uh, and this was another uh, game, so this was played in 1852 and this is called Evergreen Game. He played this against Dufresne and uh, here you can see um, uh, in the game it was played Evans Gambit, which is quite interesting uh, uh, Gambit and here uh, White being to move, he should play a move like Bishop e4 and White should be better here in wild complications, but he, he chose to play rook d1 and now, okay, today for us it's quite easy to uh, see what is the best, uh, to use some help of engines, and after rook g4, this should be anybody's game, completely unclear, yeah. But uh, Dufresne played queen f3, I might add maybe... Uh, <laughs> we are lucky because he played that, because he allowed uh, amazing a combination here. Uh, rook e7, boom, check, rook e7, and now uh, black is uh, falling apart. I mean, there is no defense in the in the game uh, black took, uh, but let's just check what might happen, for example, if... Uh, okay, king f8 is out of question, rook e3 check, and then just collect. So, if king d8, then rook d7 would come, and black would be totally busted here. For example, if uh, king d7 check, double check actually, and then, uh, well, black is busted here. There is no uh, hope, check, check, and okay, white is collecting everything, sorry, not like this, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this is just check, and okay, black can resign. <clears throat> And, uh, for example, if after rook d7, uh, black uh, decides to play a move like king c8, huh, now we have amazing uh, check, rook d8. This is unbelievable stuff. Okay, if knight d8, now it comes <laughs> queen d7, just destroying black. With this check, double check, and next move is made. This one or or king e8. This one checkmate. Yes, and uh, for example, if the rook d8, then of course uh, white can take gf3, the queen, and just win the game. And if this king d8, then just prosaic check takes, and this should be uh, just uh, okay. The position is maybe not very exciting. But this is now just winning for white. White will win the, this piece and then he will hunt the black's king. Yeah, that would be also winning. So, uh, black decided in this position after boom, rook e7, he decided to take and then queen d7 check. There is not much to do. He took check again, double check what to do. Again, check, and he was mated just like that. Yes, that was uh, Adolf Anderson, you know, the, the famous and the best player of the world before Steinitz. Yes, let me just show you now. Uh, uh, just uh, you know, you know all about Morphe, and you know about famous opera game. And I showed it in one of my series, I'm quite sure I showed it. If not, you can find it easily in the database. 
But let me just show you example of how uh, uh, how uh, Morphy uh, uh, won one game against Anderson. As I said, they played the match. It was seven two for Morphy in two draws. So in this position, uh, Anderson made mistake f four, and he allowed now wild attack knight d five. I mean, if you check Morphy's game. For example, Opera game and then some other games uh, against Shulten, that's one of my favorites from him. Shulten Morphy, when Shulten played uh, uh, King's Gambit and he was just punished, you know. So here, Knight d5, you don't have to invite Morphy twice to attack you. He was brutal. And now, okay, Black took the pawn, check. What to do if King Descent made Queen G4? So he plays this check. What to do this Bishop C4? So he's not even interested in taking material. No, no. Morphy was just going for everything. He wanted to beat you, to beat his opponent, to mate him. Bishop C4, Knight D4, check. Okay, D5, check again. Yeah, here, uh, I don't know, maybe queen d5 was uh, interesting, but probably not enough. And after this king g6, yeah, queen d5 is simply not enough. It would be too much uh, material, yeah. So king g6 check, and f takes e3, knight c2 check. King e2, and here after 17 moves, such a brilliant player, a legendary, uh, you know, Anderson, he was forced to resign, yes. But that's amazing if you ask me. So Morphy was remarkably strong, amazingly strong. So 17 moves, King e2, and Anderson resigned. Okay, so as I said, uh, the first unofficial uh, match for the world title was played in 1866 when Steinitz won against Andersen and unfortunately it was unofficial. So, this is it for the intro. Uh, I'm really, really sorry that I don't have more time to show you more material, uh, but don't worry. Uh, I'll uh, tell you much more and uh, we'll see We'll start from first video when I will be presenting you the first match between Steinitz and Zuckertort.